Hello, I'm Executive Chef Joseph Schutzler. Welcome to our kitchen. Today I'd like to share with you my recipe and technique for making bacon. Today we'll be making bacon from the belly as well as shoulder bacon. So join me now as I show you how I prepare mine. Here we have a piece of the pork belly and it's roughly a uh, four pound piece. So we're, it's ready to go. We're just gonna put that off to the side. Now here I had a bone in pork shoulder that I deboned and the bone will end up saving for a stock or you know soup or something. And what we're gonna do to, do the, to make pork shoulder bacon is taking the fat side, what I like to do is cut it, essentially kind of cut it in half. like so. This piece we'll put to the freezer, cryovac it, and use it for goulash or something. To make my cure, as with any cure, we begin with salt. I have two-thirds a cup of kosher salt, one cup of turbinado sugar. You could use brown sugar, but I, I just prefer turbinado. I also have two tablespoons of molasses, I like the molasses because it helps get me a little darker color. I have eight tablespoons of maple syrup. I have a quarter cup of granulated garlic and a quarter cup of mixed peppercorns coarsely chopped. And then go ahead and stir this together. Now I have it loosely together, I will add our curing agent. For this, I'm actually using celery juice powder. Celery that has been powdered, and because celery contains naturally nitrates, it will do the curing for me. So therefore, I can actually call this an uncured bacon or as I like to think of it more so as a naturally cured bacon. So now we will be, uh, mix this completely together. Some people, when they make their, their uh, dry rub for this, for their uh, cure, sometimes they make it a little wetter, sometimes a little drier. It's just your personal preference. I tend to like mine a little on the wetter side simply because I feel that I get more coverage or better coverage on the uh, meat. Now we have it mixed onto seasoning the meat. Well, we have our meats ready and our cure. The recipe for this cure should do anywhere from five to eight pounds of curing. So let's begin with just rubbing it. And once you have it covered, there's a couple ways you could do this. One, you could put it into a two gallon Ziploc bag, seal it and put it to the refrigerator. Or you could do it, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna put it into a hotel pan and let it sit. I'll wrap it with plastic wrap and then let it sit. I always do the meat side down. I now have the shoulder rubbed with the cure. I'm gonna put mine into hotel pans. Many people like to use Ziploc bags. This will have to cure for seven days. And I set a reminder or a notification in my phone. For every 12 hours, I will want to flip this. I'm starting with the meat side down. 12 hours from now, I will flip it and repeat the process for seven days. Well, here we are after seven days in the cure. And you see all the excess liquid that was pulled out, which is perfectly normal. When curing meats, the whole purpose is to dry it and remove the moisture. It's a lot firmer. And now from here, we want to rinse it in a sink that has been sanitized under cold water. So we will gently rinse this off. Well, now our pork belly and shoulder have been rinsed. Let's go ahead and soak it in cold water. 
I soak it in about three gallons of cold water for these two pieces. I like ample water to help pull out the salt. We'll check back in an hour and proceed to the next step. Well, it's time to remove our shoulder and belly from the water. We will then, I like to move it to a rack over the sink, allow the excess water to fall off. Then we want to dry it off. I'll pat it dry with some towels, paper towels, whatever. Drying it as much as I possibly can. Well, our pork is now dry. What we like to do is take our bacon hooks and go ahead and insert them. Take it around two inches from below the edge of the bacon or belly, and then we go ahead and hang it. Now, when hanging this, we're gonna hang it into either a refrigerator or the smoker. We need a place to be cool, which is below 40 degrees Fahrenheit or five Celsius, in order for the air to hit the product. Well, here we are after the 24 hours of hanging in the smoker. I'm taking full advantage of the colder temperatures outside. And uh, rather than putting it in the refrigerator, I just hang mine straight into the smoker. So the pieces of pork are a little too high, so I rigged a couple pieces of cedar underneath the top rack just to give me some additional elevation so it doesn't really bend and stays a little straight. So now what we want to do is we're going to take our smoke tube. I have it filled with a mixture of wood chips and pellets just to try to get a little more burn time out of it. And what we will do is we will light this and let it burn for 10 minutes and then we blow it out, put the smoke tube into the smoker, close the cabinet and leave it in there for six to eight hours. We're at the end of our 10 minutes. And I'm just gonna take the smoker um, tube and put it in our smoker, close our door, set our timer for six hours. Now, drying the product is critical. The reason is it the, forms a protein skin on the exterior called pellicle. And that is what offers a protective layer against bacteria as well as enables smoke to adhere to the product much better. The drier the product, the more smoke you can develop. Well, here we are after eight hours of smoke. I will take a look at it. And we have some really nice color on it. And now what I'm going to do is set the temperature for 175 degrees Fahrenheit and we're gonna cook it or hot smoke it until the internal temperature is 157 degrees Fahrenheit. It should take about an hour and a half, two hours, but because it's actually about nine degrees, five degrees Fahrenheit outside, it may take a little bit longer. Well, here we are. It's been about two hours and 45 minutes and we're going to take a look at our bacon. Want to take a look at the internal temperature. I'm going to go 152 degrees Fahrenheit. Beautiful color on it. And we have our temperature. <clears throat> we'll then pull it off. And then I want to move it to a sheet pan and allow this to cool overnight in the refrigerator or out here in the garage simply because it's so cold out. Well, after the smoker, we had gone to the refrigerator to chill overnight. We're now ready for slicing. The belly, I like to slice anywhere from a eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. 
We have some nice color on this. Great smoke flavor after eight hours of smoking. Now the pork shoulder. Um, I like to slice the, oh, even a little bit thinner. Because right now the way it is, I like to eat it like this on a sandwich. There's really no need to bake it. And the texture, the consistency on it, it's very similar to prosciutto. Well, there you have our smoked bacon. It is a little bit of a process, I'm not gonna lie. But the great thing with it is you don't really have to babysit it. You know, to flip the product, yes, every 12 hours. But there is a way around that as well. <clears throat> For the next time that I do this, uh, I would like to point out that I'm going to reduce the amount of sugar in the cure by 25%. I don't really prefer my smoked meats that be sweet. This has a little bit of sweetness to it. Nothing wrong with it. It is good, but I just prefer smoky spicy garlic heavily <laughs> garlic and uh black pepper and white pepper more than sweetness when it comes to my smoked meat um the next time i believe i will use a brine instead of the dry rub because using the brine i will have 100 percent contact of the product with the brine solution so therefore i don't need to flip it every 12 hours and uh, I would go again with the eight hours of smoke. I like the smoke content to it. I think it's really nice. The pork shoulder, as I mentioned, is very reminiscent of like a prosciutto. Slice it thin, eat it as is. In Hungary, this is how we will eat it. Just with some bread, some nice vegetables to go with it, maybe some mustard and have at it. So, well, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope, uh, you know, that maybe it inspires you to one day make some bacon. I could tell you this, I probably will no longer purchase bacon from a grocery store or the butcher just for the fact is we can make our own and do it at any flavor that we like. So thank you again for joining me. I hope that you subscribe and also leave some comments and questions below. The recipe will be below as well. Yo et